Yo, Adam Saxton here with Guy in a Cube. And in this video, we're gonna take a little quick look at what query folding is and how you can see the query that's actually gonna be sent. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's talk about this a little bit. I was at the Power BI World Tour not too long ago, and a question came up when I was demoing some aspect of a talk I was giving, and they're like, whoa, go back, do that again. What is that, and how long has that been inside of Power BI Desktop? And my answer was, it's been there for a while. And so, to lead into what I showed, let's talk a little bit first about query folding and what query folding is. And to do that, let's jump into Power BI Desktop. All right. So let's go in. I've got a Power BI desktop here that has uh, data already imported, and you can see that over in the fields area over on the right. I've got some tables, but let's go into Power Query itself. We're going to edit queries, and then let me go to, let's go to customer, and we'll see this, because this has some good examples. Over on the right, under our query settings, we can see applied steps, and these steps are the different actions that I've taken inside of Power Query itself. So you can see that I renamed some columns, I inserted a merge column, I added a conditional column, and these are all steps inside of Power Query itself. In this case, the data source is SQL Server, and with regards to query folding, what this is gonna do is take all of those steps, bring them together into one T SQL statement, and then send that off to SQL Server and let SQL do all the hard work. Query folding is awesome from that perspective. So this means for each step, it's not sending like an individual T SQL statement out to SQL Server, it's just taking all of those and making one statement to make it more efficient, which is how we like it. So if it's sending only one statement that's combining all those steps to SQL Server, how do we see what that is? And there's a couple different ways you could do it. Obviously you could slap SQL Profiler Trace onto your SQL Server and you could see it coming across that way. And also whatever other monitoring tools that you're using, maybe it's X events, maybe it's Profiler, whatever, all of those would work. What you can do inside of Power BI Desktop though is this, check this out. So I'm gonna go to the last step that we had. I'm gonna right click on it and you're gonna see this view native query. And when we select that, it's gonna come up and show me the actual query that results going to SQL Server. So this includes the rename column, this includes the merge column, this includes the conditional column, and you can see the T-SQL statement that's going to occur. And what you can do, let's hit okay, we can go up to, let's just go to the step that was inserting the merge column, let's go look at that, we can go to view native query, and now we can see this T-SQL statement that would have resulted if that was our last step in the journey. So it's building on this statement as you do more steps. So if I removed a column, it would remove that from the list as well. And we all know how performant auto-generated T-SQL statements are against your production SQL server, right? What if you thought, hey, looking at this, I can actually, I know that I can write a more performant T-SQL statement to go to my SQL server to get that data in a more profi proficient manner. So let's look at this. Let's go to, I'll just go to a new, pretend we're getting a new, item from SQL Server, and I can enter in the server and database name, and under advanced, I can expand that, and I can enter my own T-SQL statement, and it will use this to actually go to SQL Server and pull data back. Here's the catch. If you do this option, you are not going to be doing any query folding after this point, which means if I remove additional columns, if I do that merge, if I do that conditional column, none of that will be folded back into the main statement to go to SQL Server. So if you go this route and you want to have a more performant T-SQL statement in your queries, what I recommend is you push as much of that back to the SQL Server as possible or whatever your database is. So this means when you write that native query that you're creating yourself, make sure you do all those operations in there. So make sure if you're doing any rename of columns, if you're removing columns, if you're merging columns, doing any type of conditional statements, any of those transforms, write it in that base T-SQL statement. If you do those steps outside in Power Query, all of that processing and work is gonna be done on the Power Query or Power BI side of things, which could cause performance issues from a refresh perspective. So just be aware of it, it is there. You can look at that native query, you can add your own native query and figure out what works best for you, your solution. 
So how many people knew about this feature? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments if you knew about it, if you didn't know about it, if this was mind blowing for you, I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.